catch my breath. So I got this drill, it's called in and out Ben claims that this is the hardest, most difficult seven round drill that you can run. And I don't disagree, I've done this before. Um, again, it's called, I think I mentioned it, it's called in and out So basically you have a vision barrier about eight feet wide. You have a target which you enter and exit on. And then on each side, you have another target at distance. In this case, it, I have eight inch steel plates. So basically what you do is you start on one side, you shoot the enter the open target as you're coming in, hit the steel or the further target, and then shoot it again as you're backing out and then end on the steel again. Um, so there's a, a few different components or skills that you're testing, obviously. You're testing um, uh, shooting into position, shooting out of position, but then you're also testing a hard exit, which means that you're exiting on a difficult target, so it requires um, a lot of patience and not trying to get out too soon and missing, which I did a couple of times. And then also it requires, again, uh, transitions from an easy target um, onto a hard target as you're um, kind of settling into position. Um, what makes this drill difficult, at least what I'm finding, is all of the position changes. You're doing a lot of cross-stepping cross and um, kind of just shooting across your body. Really difficult in such a short uh, amount of distance. But this is something that you'll see, something similar like this, in matches, in stages quite often, where you're having to switch positions like this or turn and do wide transitions as you're moving. Um, so um, it's a great drill, only seven rounds. So it's pretty efficient on, from a round, round count perspective. Uh, so I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, and as you saw, I was not, I missed on steel a couple times. And that's mostly because my dot is not settled and I'm not waiting for um, the right level of confirmation. And on this, on an eight, on an eight um, inch steel target, at about 15 yards. Um, I want that dot, at least for me, to stop. I wanna see like a nice little round dot right where I'm looking in the middle of a steel plate. Um, so we'll keep going and um, see how this goes. So times, um, I think we're in the sixes, so low sixes. The fastest time which I hit all the steel was 610, so. Okay, so I'm struggling a little bit with that steel. And again, like I said earlier, I think it's my footwork. Um, there's a lot of movement in my dot. And, but moreover, um, I'm not allowing the dot to settle. Um, I'm kind of firing the shot a little too soon. The dot's not quite settled, it's still moving around. Um, and it's a tough shot. So like I said at the beginning, the goal is to have that dot look like a dot right where I'm looking on the, on the steel plate. So. I'm gonna try and really just mentally focus that I need to see that before I fire the shot and see how it goes.
So, still struggle a little bit, but again, when I allow my sight picture to dictate when I fire the shot, um, I'm doing much better. It's confirmation that that's exactly what I need to do, or that's why I was missing. Um, especially in situations like this, um, at least for me, whether it's this target coming in or exiting, or it's those back targets that are a little bit more difficult from a shot placement perspective, um, I'm shooting reactively. And what that means is um, I'm seeing a sight picture, fire, sight picture, fire. Um, if I were standing still shooting that target, I basically see one sight picture and I'd send two shots. And that second shot would be as fast as I can pull the trigger. Uh, because uh, I'm not moving. I know what how the gun behaves in recoil. So I can predict that that second shot is going to go pretty much where the first shot went. Um, where something like this, because I'm moving, I can't predict what the gun is going to be doing on that second shot. So I need to get a second sight picture. Maybe some guys can do it react uh, predictively, you know, get one side picture and just hammer two shots. But for me, in order to guarantee alphas on a close target like this on the move, I'm going to shoot reactively. And again, with these two, that side picture is a little bit more loose. So what I mean is an acceptable sight picture to fire that shot is I'm looking at a spot and I just see a streak of red somewhere around that spot. That's when I fire, see a streak of red fire. On those back targets, like I mentioned earlier, because it's a small plate, not a room, lot of room for error, I need to see that dot stop where I'm looking and that's when um, I fire the shot. All right, this is a great drill. It's already really hot. I mean, I'm sweating, so um, we'll see how this goes. But give it a shot, guys. This is a good, if you have, um, you know, if you have the resources, in other words, the range to be able to do something like this. I know a lot of you guys don't. You have to shoot on a static range, which is unfortunate, but you can set something up like this in dry fire to maybe to scale um, and work on this in dry fire. It's very, very helpful, very, very tough. Uh, all right, guys, thanks.